Howdy, folks. I'm Miss Susie. I'm Amber. And here's a steamboat that has a bell. Amber's like, wow, we're really scraping the bottom <laughs> of the barrel here for uh, for uh, who you are, Brian. <laughs> Speaking of scraping the bottom of the barrel, our next letter is titled, our first letter is titled, <laughs> Am I the Jerk for Refusing to Make My Ex-Husband's Wedding Cake? Him him scraping the bottom of the barrel, not not op yeah i'm a 48 year old female and my ex-husband a 49 year old male and i were married for almost 20 years until he confessed his feelings for my now ex-best friend best friend at the time alex was 48 year old female the two of them worked at the same company and would spend time together daily. They ended up developing feelings for each other and were sneaking around for almost two years. He left me and she left her husband. He also left me and my kids with nothing. My ex-husband and I have two kids together, a 22-year-old male and a 20-year-old female that are both off at school now. ex husband and I are no contact and my kids want nothing to do with him and Alex. I opened up my own bakery three years ago and the business is doing great, as well as the money. We are very popular in my city and do a lot of custom orders for events like baby showers, gender reveals, birthday, and most importantly, weddings. Well, a few days ago, I'm at work and we get an order for a wedding cake. Two layer cake, red velvet cake, vanilla buttercream frosting, and a sign that says congratulation, X's name and Alex. I check the email address to be completely sure and sure enough, it's Alex's email address. The absolute audacity. I've tried to be the bigger person throughout my entire divorce with my ex, but this was taking it too far. There's hundreds of other bakeries in my area and they chose me. So I responded back to the order, canceling it and giving it some BS excuse like we're very busy right now with other orders. The order is unfortunately canceled. What does she do? A couple hours later, the order is resubmitted under a different email address. She must think I'm stupid. So I decline the order again. I then get a call at the bakery from Alex telling me to stop canceling her orders, that business is business, and that I need to get over myself and stop being petty. I refused and I hung up on her. I was then bombarded with calls on my personal cell and to the bakery from Alex, my ex, my ex's mother-in-law, etc. They were all fuming and demanded that I put the issue aside and treat them like regular customers. Alex was sending me nasty texts saying how I've taken this too far and that she's <laughs> expecting me to be the bigger person and just make the cake since she's always been a fan of my cakes and they're the best in the city, which is true, they are the best and very popular. I told them to all kick rocks and that both my ex-husband and Alex have some audacity trying to order a cake from my business out of all places after all the stuff they put me through. My kids are both on my side. My mom thinks that I should have been the bigger person and just made the cakes. Did I take it too far? Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. If Alex loves your cake so much, then maybe she shouldn't have cheated with your husband. Well, OP, I would say that you're not the jerk here. And I think that there are certainly things that you could do if you really wanted to make that cake that would send the message to them that their business really isn't welcome. I mean, honestly, Opie's doing them a favor by not doing their cake. Like, why would you expect the person whose marriage you destroyed, like, to give you a good cake? Like, I would just assume they were going to sabotage it somehow if I tried ordering from them. Yeah, they are really just not being wise individuals. If you really like someone's cakes that much, like Amber said, don't cheat on them. Don't yeah. break up a friendship and a marriage. And it seems like OP would have been a little bit, probably would, if they had just been divorced on good terms, then it might have been a completely different situation. But they were sneaking around behind OP's back and then they broke up their marriage, right? If, 
her husband had originally just said, came to them and been like, oh, you know, things aren't working out between us and I think I just need a divorce. That's that's one thing. I mean, honestly, that's still, I, I would still go OP the full right not to want to associate with either of them anymore. So. No, yeah. I mean, certainly I don't think that it's her obligation to. But what they did is extra harmful yeah. for sure. Like they, they both were really horrible people in doing that. And the audacity of them to be like, well, we like your cake, so you just need to get over this and be the bigger person. It's like, what happened to you two to being the bigger person or anything? Yeah, and all I'm saying is that there were proper and correct avenues to take for ending a relationship, and they didn't do that. So, that's all I was saying. Let me know what you folks think. Anyhow, take care and good luck. And I don't care. 8587 says, not the jerk. They were obviously doing this to mess with you. And OP replies, oh, I don't doubt it. I've moved on and I'm doing better than ever. Successful business, new healthy relationship, the kids school paid for, getting divorced with my ex was the best thing that happened in my life. X and Alex both actually were laid off from their jobs due to COVID. I've heard through the grapevine that money is tight and that my ex-in-laws and Alex parents are the ones footing the bill for the wedding. Sounds like OP is doing well for themselves. Mm -hmm. The best revenge is a life well lived. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not giving my sister her wedding dress because she didn't invite my underage son? I'm a 40-year-old male, and I have a sister who is a 30-year-old female who is getting married in one week. The groom proposed to her a year ago at a family dinner that left everyone speechless, but very happy for them as they are long-time companions. During this dinner, my sister asked my son, a 17-year-old male, to make her a wedding dress. My son has always loved design and fashion, and he took a technical course in this area and sewing. And even his friends keep asking for clothes because they are so beautiful. He agreed, but he said that he needed some time and that he would need her opinion consistently. At first, my sister was very annoying. My son drew about 50 dresses in a month and she only liked one, which she continued with. He sewed it with great quality fabric, which I paid for as I wanted to get involved in a certain way. For five months, he made several adjustments to suit her wishes and she always complained about something. After a while, he arrived in the final model and it was just amazing. My mother cried seeing my sister in the dress and I confess that I almost got emotional too. The problem was that last week, my son came to talk to me about the wedding invitation that had not arrived for him, but only for the other family members. I thought maybe he didn't need one, but it still felt weird. I messaged my sister, raising the issue, and she replied that she didn't want any underage people at her wedding because there would be alcohol. I asked if she was going to make an exception for my son, but she cut me off and said no. There are no children in our family. My son is the only minor. So I didn't see any sense in this rule for family members. And to make matters worse, my son was very sad and cried because he spent months on this dress and couldn't go to the wedding. I was very upset and I told my sister that she should look for another dress as soon as possible as she would no longer wear the one that my son made. She called and yelled at me saying that I was being unreasonable and that I couldn't do this. My mother called me saying that I should deliver the dress and follow the rules but I didn't and I hung up on her. Because of this the family is divided. Many agree with me and condemn my sister's actions saying that she could have made an exception but another part says that I'm unreasonable for spoiling her big day. I don't think that I'm being wrong, just rational and paying her back in kind. So am I the jerk? Update. So I want to thank everyone for all the comments and suggestions. I really didn't expect my post to resonate so much. I talked with my son about the suggestions you guys gave me and he agreed to sell the dress at market price. He calculated the price of everything and the value was quite high. We sent the proposal to my sister and she hated it. She said that she couldn't afford it because it was too expensive and it should be a gift because she's family. I responded by saying that it was too easy to say that she was family to get a free dress but not enough to include my son. She cried and called and begged me not to ruin her day but I didn't call because to me, it was BS. At no point did she offer to just let my son go or apologize for it. And for anyone who said that maybe she's homophobic, I'm not sure, but I think 
who could be influencing her is her fiance who's a Christian and has never been close to my son. However, I don't care if he is or not. If she wants to exclude my son from this event, she will be cutting ties with me. And for those who are asking for a photo of the dress, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my son didn't agree, and unfortunately, I won't post it because of that. If anything else happens, I'll let you know. Until then, thank you all. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. That is so bogus of her, especially like with the update now that we see that it's probably homophobia, like I'm going to use his dress sewing skills to my advantage, but I can't be bothered to have him at my wedding. Like that's just such a gross attitude. It really is. And it sounds like he's very talented. It sounds mm -hmm. like he's a really hardworking, industrious young man. And whether or not he likes men should not be a factor about whether or not he's invited to a wedding. Exactly. <laughs> like it just blows my mind like he has been beyond generous like gifting someone a wedding dress that you've handmade is like the biggest one of the biggest gifts you can give oh and months yeah months he didn't just put this together in right. like a day it was months of his time and energy getting every detail down to her specifications you know and so for her to not even have the courtesy like honestly if someone did that for me like they would have like the place of honor at the wedding and like i would be telling everyone yeah this kid made my dress he's amazing yeah, and yeah. like just showering them with all the gifts and you know everything yeah. because like that's what you do if someone does that and that's yeah, what family yeah. does <laughs> yeah well for a minute there i thought you meant for a minute there, I thought if someone did this to you or excluded you from oh, the wedding, no, no. so uh, and I was gonna be like, then they would get their wedding dress in a box <laughs> as ashes. <laughs> yeah, no, I just we'll burn it all down. I bet if someone made me a lovely dress, then I would be so grateful mm -hmm. and like you know just bursting with kindness and like she's just being such a bad person and so entitled. Oh yeah. So, totally. Anyhow, let me know what you folks think. Take care and good luck. And ResDogs 870 says, Not the jerk, he should go and wear the dress. And OP <laughs> replied, That would be definitely unexpected. <laughs> All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some mystery tea right here. No, it's not actually a mystery tea. It's just a, a tea. <laughs> I can't use that term anymore because mystery tea has its own unique thing. And Amber has a joke. How do you stop an elephant from charging? Well, you take away their, their business license and then they can't charge you anymore. Uh, take away their credit card, but yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that works too. I got, I got that too quickly. I wasn't expecting that to be the answer, to be quite honest. But I guess that makes sense. And I have Earl Grey. Maybe we need to upgrade from kids' jokes so we can stump you a little better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you're all having a happy Wednesday. I had to go check the calendar because I have <laughs> no idea what day of the week it is. Amber, tell me, in a haiku, what's the moral of today's story? Gosh, what, what's the what's the pattern for a haiku? I don't remember. It's like five. Is it five seven five syllables? I think it's something like that. All right, I'll need a second. Don't be mean and rude to the person who makes you a free wedding dress. <laughs> I think that is a haiku. <laughs> Let's see if I can come up with a haiku on the spot. If you do exclude a person who is kind to you, <laughs> that's eight then it will be blue. <laughs> that was a bad haiku. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye!